Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R340 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on Intel processors, but in the video series as a whole we're going to cover memory, CPU, hard drive, solid state drives, we're going to show you how to install Windows Server Operating System, how to update your BIOS, how to do mass updates, we're going to cover the NIC, the RAID, the power supplies, and we're going to do everything in between, so click that like, smash that sub subscribe, and let's get going. I appreciate you stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R340 server. So let's hop into the CPUs. There's one CPU inside the R340. Uh, the pin count is uh, 1151, so it's an LGA 1151. That means it takes Intel Xeon E2100 series and E2200 series. If you're having any trouble getting your 2200 series to work, uh, make sure you have an updated BIOS and updated firmware, which we will do later in this video series if you need step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. There are some other CPUs that are compatible as well. The uh, i3, there's some Celerons, there's some Pentiums, and we'll put up a list right here of some of the other compatibles. What we normally build with are the Intel Xeons that, that we mentioned, the E2100 and E2200 series. Uh, but if you want anything uh, that we're not listing on our website, you can always contact sales and we can custom build something for you. But generally what we stock is on the Xeon side and that's what we like to work with, okay? Um, now, uh, as far as uh, the chipset, it is an uh, Intel C246. We get asked all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And really kind of depends on what your application and what your budget is, right? So we break it down into three different categories, our low-end CPUs, our value CPUs, and our high-end CPUs. Now, obviously, with the low-end, it's going to be uh, you know, lesser cost. It's uh, great if you're on a budget, but might not have as uh, powerful of a punch. Uh, the value CPUs is what we like to build with a lot because it is uh, still a, um, a good cost or a good price overall. It's still going to be more than the, the budget CPUs, um, but it, it'll have a higher performance, right? So it's that nice little sweet spot right there. But for some applications, you have to have the high end, and it's going to cost a little bit more, and these are the ones that we recommend that aren't going to completely break the bank, right? So uh, let's go ahead and hop in. So the low end that we recommend, uh, there's three of those. It's the uh, E2124, E2134, and the E2134. 2136. That's going to be a 4 core, 4 core, and a 6 core. That's going to be 3.3, 3.5, and 3.3. So we put up all the specs right there for you for the three low end that we recommend. So now let's hop into uh, the value CPUs that we like. There'll be three of those as well. It'll be the E2174G, the E2176G, and the E 2186G. All three of those are great value procs. It's going to be a 4-core, 6-core, 6-core. It's going to be 3.8, 3.7, and 3.8. So all those, again, are uh, great options as a whole on the value side. So now let's hop into our high-end CPUs. There's going to be three of those as well. And now we're going to be entering into the E2200 series for the high-end. That's going to be the E2278G, the E2286G, and the E2288G. All great options on the high-end side. It's going to be 8-core, 6-core, 8-core, 3.4, 4.0 and 3.7, so those are going to be the uh, the specs as a whole. And again, it always depends on your budget and uh, your application as far as what CPU you should go with. Uh, but those are some of the options and the ranges that we recommend. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to hop in and install one of these, and we're going to show you how to remove your old CPU and how to upgrade your new CPU and the proper steps in between, uh, just to make sure that you're being careful with the machine and not damaging anything on accident. Uh, and we also definitely recommend notice I'm wearing my ESD gear. Uh, I always think it's great when you're in the machine just to take the extra steps to be safe and be cautious because again uh, you don't want to accidentally damage your machine uh, or you know degrading the parts inside by simply shocking it. Okay so let's go ahead and hop in. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install our CPU uh, and remove our old one. So here are all the items we're going to need. We're going to need a screwdriver to remove the heat sink. We are going to need uh, a rag to clean off the heat sink and to clean the CPU, as well as thermal grease to put our, on our new CPU when we install it. So those are all the items that we're going to need. So let's go ahead and hop in. So make sure it's set to unlock. Pop the latch, lift the top pretty much like any server you've been in before. Now, when we do our different chassis video, we'll highlight uh, a lot of the different components and compare the um, different uh, R340s, but in this video we're going to be focused more on CPU, so we're just going to stay kind of focused over here. So we're going to want to remove our air baffle and just lift this straight up. 
So you will notice again, there's one CPU and that CPU is gonna control these four DIMM slots over here. Uh, with the one CPU, uh, it's just literally gonna be a Phillips head and it's gonna be a, a really easy upgrade as a whole. So here's what I like to do. Um, I per personally like to do uh, more of a zigzag pattern or a cross pattern. So I'll go ahead and I'll get this first one out and then I'll come over here and I'll get this next one. And I'll zig over here. All right, now we're down to the last one. And you can feel it when you're uh, unscrewing it as far as when it's popping off of the uh, motherboard. So now we are good to go. I'm just gonna simply lift this straight up. And one of the things I do wanna note, um, sometimes depending on how old the uh, the system is, the thermal paste can be uh, you know just flaky. And so whenever I lift it up, I like to flip it over right away, just in case. Uh, sometimes it's actually still wet and it's not as big a deal, but if it's uh, all flaky, you just don't want it falling in to your motherboard um, and just making a mess or landing in your dim slot. So just lift it straight up and kind of flip it over. And this is older and you can see if we were to like clean it right now, it would flake all onto the board. So we're gonna clean it off screen over here uh, just to make sure that we don't damage or just run into any issues inside of our, our machine. So just a quick wipe and you can see the heat sink is in better shape already. So we'll put this to the side. Now we're gonna come back in and we're gonna go ahead and clean the CPU, um, sometimes depending. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my mind. I'm not gonna clean this one in here because it is gonna kind of flake all over and then I'm gonna have to get the air spray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out. So that in order to take it out, what you're gonna do is push this down and over. And by doing that, you release the latch that you can pull back and the top will come straight up. And I like to personally grab right here as opposed to here, just because there's a little bit more space. So I'm gonna take this and put this over on our tray and I'll clean it when I get it on the tray, um, but I'd rather do it so it just doesn't flake off. And the other thing I wanna mention is lift straight up. Sometimes people, and I'll do it with the uh, clean CPU, sometimes people will uh, drag a corner when they lift up. And when you do that, unfortunately you could damage uh, one of the 1151 pins that are in here. And you just don't wanna do that because if you do that, all of a sudden you pretty much need a new motherboard because uh, different parts stop working, channels on dims start going out. This basically becomes a massive issue. So um, they always just tell people lift straight up and make sure you don't drag it because the dragging it is what damages the pin slots, okay? Um, all right, now next thing I wanted to point out before we install the new one, right here, and we can scroll in and zoom in, there is a gold triangle on the corner. And this gold triangle lets you know where or which position to put your CPU. So on the motherboard, there's these white triangles. You see these two white triangles? That's how you know to line the gold triangle with the white triangle, and we wanna come down like this. Um, and that's just a, a simple uh, tip, just make sure you put it in right. So now we're gonna come straight down. And one of the things I do like to note is you wanna come straight down and not at an angle. So, all right, so now that it's in, we are gonna go ahead and close this up and put our thermal grease on. So when we put uh, push this down, you're just gonna push down and in. Uh, pretty simple there. So now we're gonna just go ahead and put a small little uh, bit of thermal paste on in the middle. Not too much, not too little. And sometimes because this, uh, there'll be a little bit of extra, I'll either wipe it on there or finish it by wiping onto the rag just to not make a mess because I hate having thermal paste all over my workspace. <laughs> all right, so next thing that we're gonna do, um, people do this two different ways. Some people will get like the little plastic uh, uh, spreader and they'll uh, wipe it and kind of make it even onto the other uh, CPU, which is great. Um, I personally will just take the heat sink and I'll put it straight down and kind of smush it where it will evenly disperse all over uh, the CPU. But again, you don't wanna to put too much on there because if you do, then it'll get all inside uh, the CPU and inside the bracket and you just don't wanna to have to clean that mess up later. So, all right, let's put the heat sink on. Let's just go ahead and drop it straight down. All right, so we've got it lined up. So now we're going to go ahead and start the screwdriver. And sometimes you do have to push the heat sink down to get the, um, the screw to connect. And now I like to, again, do the zigzag and come across. Okay. And on that one, I definitely had to push down 
to get the screw to connect. Right now everything's going good because we've already got our two first ones in so it's pretty easy. And we're just gonna finish it up with the final one. And really it was just that simple of an upgrade. Uh, the main takeaways that I always tell people, just be really careful when you're actually lifting the CPU up and putting the CPU in. Uh, damaging the pins would be a uh, awful step to do because you would need a new motherboard. Um, outside that, honestly, it's a very, very simple process. So, hey, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. Click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers yourself, we build HP, Dell, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, plus a bunch more. If you need uh, AMD Epics, if you need AMD Ryzen's, Intel Scalables, uh, we kind of cover everything within the life cycle, uh, new and old, and we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Hey, thanks for stopping by, guys.